And everybody said, yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wonderful to be in first stack again. And I pray that the word of God will impact every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. Thank you for the study of the word. Thank you for the faithful people who are always coming here and all, all over Lagos and all over Nigeria, all over Africa and beyond. We well, thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of giving your people. And we pray that the study of the word will not be in vain in Jesus' name. That will be doers of the word. That the word will not just entertain us, but it will impact our lives in a powerful way in Jesus' name. I will wake up and be excited at obeying your word in Jesus' name. Once again, open our eyes of understanding tonight. That you will see wondrous, wonderful things out of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. We're coming to Third John chapter 1. It actually has only one chapter. And we began this uh, brief epistle last week. And there we saw that John the Beloved wrote to Gaius. And he referred to Gaius as well beloved. Because he was born again, was converted, saved. He was free from sin. And then he committed his life of love unto the Lord. And then loving the brethren as well. And then we saw the promises that God has given to us for the body, for the soul, for the spirit, and for the work of our hand. Because John the beloved said, I wish above all things, I pray, I desire beyond all things that you will prosper and you will prosper. And that you'll be in health, you'll be in health. And that it is as your soul prospers. The prosperity of the soul spiritually will be upon us in Jesus' name. And then he said, I rejoice and rejoice greatly. Because I found some of your children and testimony has come that they are walking in the truth. When we walk in the truth and lay by the truth and accept the truth and believe the truth and conduct our lives. By the truth of the word of God, it brings joy to Christ. It brings joy to the Father. And it brings joy to heaven. It brings joy to the leadership too in the church. And then our family members are happy that we're born again. And that if the trumpet sounds any time, all of us in the family will go to be with the Lord. Because we are walking in the light and walking in the truth and walking in the word of God. And it says, that's the greatest of my joy. Because it says in verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear than to know that my children are walking in the truth. Today we're coming to verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. And the topic tonight is the ministry of fellow helpers in gospel propagation. There's gospel propagation because Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Spread it abroad. Tell everyone. Preach to every creature. It's the gospel and you propagate it. It's the gospel and you preach it. It's the gospel and you make everybody know. And then they come in the power of the gospel impacting their lives. They're convicted of their sins. They confess their sins to the Lord. They're convicted and then confessing. And then they're converted by the Lord. And their souls and their lives are totally different. And the life they live now because they're converted. They're not like they used to be. And then after that, we have that gospel coming from those who are saved and going to the neighbors around and going to people around them we're spreading the gospel we're preaching the gospel we're impacting the lives of other people or the gospel is the propagation of the gospel now there are apostles they propagate the gospel there are preachers of the word like evangelists and pastors they propagate the gospel there are helpers too there are supporters too there are people that go along them they support them and they go along with them to spread that gospel that's what the Lord is talking about. He's talking about the people that commit themselves to the Lord along with those apostles and the pastors and the teachers and they're spreading the gospel as well. Look at verse 5 now. It says, Beloved, 
that doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to the strangers. It says in verse 6, which upon witness testimony of thy charity, of thy love, of thy affection, of the practical ways in which you are responding to them before the church, whom if thou bring toward forward on their journey, after a godly search, thou shalt do well. It's talking to Gil said, you're doing well because whatever you do, you're doing faithfully. You're doing with your heart and you're reaching out to the people. You're reaching there with the gospel, with the power of the gospel because the gospel is the power of the Lord to get souls out of their seas and to bring them onto the Lord into the kingdom. And he said, I've heard of you. I've got that testimony about you that whatsoever you do in this propagation of the gospel, whatsoever you do is supporting the people that are preaching the gospel, you're doing it faithfully. And that's what the Lord requests from you, requires from you and from me, that whatever we do, we do as unto the Lord and we do faithfully. And it says this because it's based on charity. It's based on affection. It's based on the love of God in our hearts reaching out to the people. And then he says we're bringing forward the people who are preaching the gospel. Gales was involved in pushing them forward, in bringing them forward, in helping them, assisting them to make progress in the journey of preaching the gospel. It says in verse 7, because that for his name's sake, they went forward taking nothing, you know, of the Gentiles. It says, these people who are preaching the gospel, why are they doing it? It says, it's for his name's sake. They're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for the Lord. They're doing it because of their commitment to the Lord, their conversion by the Lord, and their consecration unto the Lord. For his name's sake, they have gone out. And it says, they're not taking anything from the Gentiles. It says, we therefore... It's not joking, talking about girls now. It says, we therefore, all those who are born again, all those who are children of God, all those who claim that they know the Lord, all the people have preached to you, you have accepted the gospel, now you have to take it to all the people, we therefore, who have been beneficiaries of the preaching of the gospel, beneficiaries of the ministry coming from other people, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be tell me the next word there tell me out loud that we might be fellow helpers to the truth that's what we're talking about fellow helpers to the truth the ministry of fellow helpers in gospel propagation as i've told you the recipient of this epistle was gales and was called well beloved and was also referred to as beloved as faithful as hospitable, as loving, having charity, and was committed for, to the progress of the gospel. He was a fellow helper to the truth. And that's what the Lord is calling you to, that as the gospel is moving on and the gospel is reaching out to many people around, you should not be idle. You should not just sit down and see the rest of the people preaching the gospel and then you are not involved. This gospel, the saving truth, this gospel, the scriptural truth, this gospel, the sanctifying truth, we need to possess and we need to take out to other people so that other people too will be saved so that other people too will be spiritual so that other people too will be sanctified and the lord will help us in jesus name the to topic as i told you is the ministry of fellow helpers in gospel propagation we're divided into three parts number one faithful harvesters with preachers of saving truth faithful harvesters it's like we're investing souls into the kingdom. We're bringing souls into the kingdom. And then we're talking about faithful investors with preachers of the saving faith, of saving truth. Number two, further highlights 
on the propagation, for the propagation of scriptural truth. We need further highlights. That is, we look at some verses here that may not be very clear to everyone. They just read it on the surface, and then we need to throw more light on that. We need to shed more light on that so that we'll have a better understanding because the more we understand, the more we'll be able to carry out the word of truth and the word of life and reach out to many people around us and beyond us further highlights for the propagation of scriptural truth. Number three, the fellow helpers with proclaimers of sanctifying truth. The fellow helpers with proclamation or with uh, the proclaimers of sanctifying truth. We'll come to number one. Tell me number one over there. Faithful harvesters were preachers of saving truth. Always bear that in mind that as we talk about the truth, we're talking about saving truth. The truth that saves. You're not just interested in talking, just interested in preaching, just interested in teaching, just interested in going out and saying, I'm talking for Christ. I'm reading the Bible. I'm reading the Bible to them. I'm telling them the truth. What kind of truth are you telling them? It must be saving truth. The truth that brings them out of their sin brings them to the Savior. The truth that brings them out of darkness and brings them to the light. The truth that brings them out of the world and brings them to the Lord saves them and they have forgiveness saves them and they have cleansing saves them and they are converted. So you look at your preaching, you look at your harvesting, and you find out, is this one saving souls? You look at your preaching, is it bringing conversion to the kingdom? You look at your teaching, is it bringing people out of sin and bringing them to the Savior? Look at verses 5 and 6, so John chapter 1. It's in verse 5, it says, Beloved, that doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest doest to the brethren and to the strangers. It's talking about the brethren who have taken the gospel to other places. And then they come to the city where Gaius was and then he saw that their brethren, although they are strangers to him, although they have never met before, he listened to them. He saw that they were preaching Christ. He listened to them. They were preaching the doctrine of Christ. He listened to them what Jesus said. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's a exactly what they did what jesus said and said that this word of repentance must be preached in all nations beginning at jerusalem so they have come i've never met them before but they are brethren i've never met them before but they are strangers but they preach the word and so you find in verse 6 it says which are born witness of thy charity he saw them he said they belong to the same father they belong to the same Christ. They belong to the same gospel. And they're preaching the same thing. And therefore, even though you had never met them, there was charity and love and affection before the church. Because there was a church there. And what he did, you know, there's some things to do. You cannot do them privately. There's some help you give. You cannot give it privately. And there's a kind of support you give. You cannot give privately. He did it before the church, whom if thou bring forward, on their journey and he's saying that well they have come they preach the word of God. They still want to go to another place. They want to journey to another place in preaching the gospel. It says, girls, you are in a position to help them and take them forward and bring them forward in the preaching of the gospel. You have the resources. You have the wealth. You have the money. And you have the wherewithal. You can help them. So, girls, keep on helping them and bring them forward on their journey after a godly sort. Make sure that the way you do it is not how people of the world do it and then they blow the trumpet. Not that people of the world that they follow the practices of the world and then they say I'm helping so and so. I'm the one responsible for this. I'm the one doing it. He says no. After a godly sort. After gospel pattern and after the way that Christ has laid down. He says if you do that you will do well. Somebody there will do well. Yeah. We will do well in Jesus' name. 
You see, Paul preached the gospel. He planted and Apollos watered. The apostles, they preached the gospel, but the believers spread that word abroad. And like Gaius, what the Lord is telling us is that we should all be faithful and we should take this gospel and make converts and bring people to saving truth in Christ and penetrate the hearts of people so that the word will come to them. It will drive them on their knees and they will repent and then we will be showing our charity that way. We'll be showing our love that way because we're contributing to the growth of the church. We're contributing to the strength of the church. We're contributing to the, convers to the conversion of the people that are coming to the kingdom of God. And so you're asking yourself, are you like girls? You're asking yourself, are you faithful? You're asking yourself, have you been part of the people? Although you are not the main preacher, although you are not the main pastor, although you are not the main evangelist, although you are not in the main overseer in the state or in the region, all the same, you are taking part in this. I would say, I'll be part of the people that help in building the church. I'll be part of the people that help in growing the church. I'll be part of the people that help in edifying the church. I'll be part of the people that help in strengthening the church, making the church strong. I'll be part of the people that help in purifying the church. I'll be part of the people that make the work to go on and make it go forward and the Lord will use you in Jesus name. Now you see, he wants faithfulness from us. If you look at Luke, Luke chapter 16. As Gaius was faithful, he wants us to be faithful. We'll say in your little corner, be faithful. In your office, be faithful. On the bus, be faithful. In your community, be faithful. In the church, be faithful. Outside the church, be faithful. There's a lot to do to support. There's a lot to do to help the people who are preaching the gospel and your own helping hand will not be missing in Jesus' name. Chapter 16, I mean reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. It says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. There's some people that say, well, I'm not the pastor. I'm not the evangelist. I'm not the leader. I'm not a great personality in the church. And therefore, what can I do? If you're faithful in a little sin, just that support you give just that prayer you pray and just that assistance you give you might be like an Elisha pouring water on the hands of Elijah you might just be like Aaron or lifting up the hands of Moses while Joshua was on the battlefield that lifting up of the hand of Moses will help it may just be a support it may just be that you say this is all I can do but you are faithful in that and the Lord will reward your faithfulness in Jesus Jesus name. It says it's faithfulness in a little thing, a little thing and yet because of the effect in getting souls converted and bringing souls into the kingdom, God counts it as something very much. That's why it says he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much and he that is unjust in that which is least is also unjust in much. You will not be unjust. You'll be faithful. That little thing, so-called little, that God has given you to do, and that you see there's a need to do that, you'll do it effectively and faithfully in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Luke, sorry, we're looking at Matthew chapter 10. In Matthew chapter 10, in verse 40, Matthew chapter 10, verse 40, He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. You see that? What have we read about girls? He received those brethren that were preaching the gospel. He assisted those brethren that were preaching the gospel. Even though he didn't know them. Now you will not say you don't know a lot of our leaders, a lot of our pastors a lot of our group pastors, a lot of our overseers, uh, regional and national and, and state. You don't say you don't know some of us. You know us. Even though girls did not know all those leaders, yet he helped. And of course, he also helped the ones that he knew. I pray that that spirit of helping, of assisting, of lifting up, of encouraging, of refreshing the people who are preaching the gospel, the Lord will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. In verse 41, 
manner he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what kind of reward a prophet's reward we've read that do you really believe that those are the words of jesus christ why do we leave those preachers without even helping without assisting and without supporting it says he that helps and he that just gives us that receives a, a, that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward your reward can be great in heaven your reward will be great in heaven if you just lend a helping hand lend a helping look for an area of need you know some people say some people you're cutting yourself short or you say i'm not a worker i'm not a leader i'm not this i'm not that don't tell us what you are not tell us what you are you're a christian you're a believer and then you see that the gospel belongs to christ and this gospel is to be taken everywhere and you see people who are preaching that gospel you see people who are spreading that gospel you see people who are propagating that gospel then the helping hand and do something that you say i'm part of that i'm part of that and because of what i'm doing the gospel is spreading and the lord says when he when he rewards those preachers when he rewards those pastors when he rewards those overseers part of the reward will come to your side and it says in verse 42 and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water you can do that you can do that you don't have to be a worker in quotes to do that you can you don't have to be a leader in quotes to do that you can give something equivalent to a cup of cold water unto the ministers of the lord and then it says only in the name of a disciple very lay i say unto you he shall not it shall in no wise lose his reward i'm talking to somebody there you will not lose your reward in Jesus name in a uh, first uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 4 first Corinthians chapter 4 and we're reading here from verse 1 first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God let a man so account of us well before we even talk to other people to account of us let a person account of himself you as a person as a brother as a sister understand i can be a minister because once i support those who are ministering the word i assist those who are preaching the word i lift up the hands of those who are preaching the word i encourage the people who are preaching the word i strengthen the minds of those who are preaching the word i intercede for the people who are preaching the word and i'm an encouragement i may define them and they are happy to be in the ministry because even if it's a smile even if it's a thank you even if it's a little bit of encouragement it says if we're faithful like that we'll not lose our reward then it goes on to say but still moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful that a man be found faithful in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 Ephesians chapter 6, the attitude we are to have as we are faithful to the Lord. As we are doing the work the Lord has given us to do. Remember, remember, uh, some people say, I don't have a calling. What do you mean you don't have a calling? I've, never, I've not had a voice from heaven that says, I've selected you. I've chosen you. You'll be an apostle. I've chosen you. You'll be a prophet. Well, you've not had a word like that. But, you know, all these people that assisted, girls did not have any any voice from heaven he just knew look at the preacher there he needs my help look at the preacher there he needs my encouragement look at the gospel I've got the gospel let me go along and spread the gospel with the people who have the call even though I feel I not have the call the Lord says you will not lose your reward but you do it with your look at Ephesians chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 6 it says not with eye service as men pleasers not with eye service as men pleases. I see somebody is thirsty. I gave him water to drink. That's not because of eye service. That's not because I want to please anybody. I just want to meet a need. 
I see that the children of those who are preaching the gospel, they have a particular need. Maybe it's only a shirt I have I can give to that boy. I'm not doing it because of anybody. I'm not doing it for us. I service. I'm meeting a need. I see that, uh, you know, the, because the man is out, he's preaching, he's here and there. I see that his children need more attention. And I can give that attention. I can help those uh, children of the preacher. And I do that. I do that from my heart. I'm not looking for the praise of anybody. I'm doing because I want to meet a need. Look around you. There's a need you can meet. I said there's a need you can meet. And you meet that need faithfully in Jesus' name. It says, not with high service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. It makes you a servant of Christ. Those people that are serving Christ, you are supporting them. You are lifting them up and you are encouraging them. You are, identify, you are identifying with them and they are doing more of the work for the Lord. The Lord counts you as a servant of Christ. I'll be a servant of Christ. I said, I will be a servant of Christ. It says, with good will, doing service as to the Lord, not as to men. It says, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth the same shall he receive of the lord whether it be good whether it be bound or free do you want to get to heaven i said do you want to get to heaven yeah. the lord will confirm it in jesus name yeah. and then when we get to heaven do you want to be empty-handed do you want to wear a crown yeah. do you want stars in your crown yeah. do you want to reward when you get to heaven now, what are you doing to make that yes a reality? Because we're going to heaven. And it says Christ will reward everyone according to what we have done. And it's made it so simple that I don't have to, you know, travel to Japan to go and preach. I don't have to go to uh, India to go and preach. Where I am, the people who are preaching the gospel, I can contribute money to the preaching of the gospel and the people who are going to india they'll preach the gospel and i may not go there but the same reward they have because they've gone to india and i supported them financially i'm going to have that same reward and you can do that i said you can do that and while they're away they're away on an evangelistic trip and this and that they have children back at home they have wife back at home they have you know relatives back at home and you are taking care of them you can have such a wonderful crown when you get to heaven and then people will be looking at you i know that man i know that woman she wasn't an evangelist he wasn't an apostle and look at the crown that he has and look at the reward he has and then they will understand because you've done it to the least of these my brethren you've done it unto me and christ will reward us it will be a glorious day and if you want it to be a glorious day at that time that's what the lord is saying he says become a faithful harvester with the preachers of the saving faith and those who are preaching the gospel you'll join them and you preach the gospel with them look at philemon chapter one has only one chapter philemon i'm reading here from verse uh, from verse five philemon we're reading it from verse five it says in philemon chapter one verse five talking to philemon it says over here it says uh, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. You see that? Your faith, I've heard of that. And your love, I've heard of that. You have that faith and love towards the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have that love and faith. You have it towards the saints and towards the servants of God. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Break now that verse for you to understand. In Christ Jesus. Anybody in Christ Jesus over there? And then it says, the good thing in you, in Christ Jesus. As we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, do I have any good thing in me at all? I said, do I have any good thing in me at all? A verse of scripture, a word of promise. 
a word of encouragement, a word to strengthen somebody, a statement to lift up somebody, something that will encourage and lift up the person that is uh, downhearted. I have something good in me. I should bring it out. And that's what the Lord is saying here. We show love and we show sympathy with the people who are preaching the gospel. Sometimes they can be discouraged. Look at Moses. Moses was discouraged and said, Lord, have I given back to all these people? Why am I like this? Why is this like this? And there were 70 people, 70 others. They were folding their hands. They were not doing anything. And then God said, Moses, you know, there are 70 people that choose them and they will support you. You can be one of those 70. You remember Elijah? Elijah was, uh, you know, so discouraged because Jezebel said by this time tomorrow I'm going to deal with you and then Elijah felt all alone and he thought he was all alone because uh, you know he said oh Lord just kill me I can't live again he thinks are very bad enough is enough because they're seeking after my life and I'm the only one that remains and there were 7,000 other people that have not bent their knee to bear but they were not helping they were folding their hands and so Elijah did not know them and and he was discouraged and it was only later that this uh, man uh, Obadiah was coming and Obadiah said you know when Jezebel killed all, all those people I hid a hundred of them so you are there so you know how to hide those hundred people didn't you see Elijah why can't you be a helping hand to Elijah that's what the Lord is saying we have so many people around us that can encourage us but they don't talk they don't talk. They think, pastor doesn't need encouragement. A group pastor doesn't need encouragement. He is a man of God when it comes to the pulpit. Things are great. Moses was like that too. They thought nobody can encourage Moses. Elijah was like that too. They thought nobody could encourage him. And then Paul the apostle, mighty man of God. Does he need encouragement? Paul the apostle said, Timothy, come over here. All Asia, they're forsaking me. And there's nobody at all to take care of me here. I'm waiting for you. And when you are coming, you bring that cloak and you bring that uh, book because I need you here. And if you see Mark, I said I didn't need him before but if you see him tell him i want to see him it's profitable unto me for ministry the people you think are strong and you never say hello to them you never greet them you never help them you never lift them up they need your helping hand somebody needs your love someone in sadness yearning for gladness somebody needs your love and you'll give it to them in jesus name. and that's what it says it talks about this philemon and it says that the communication of thy faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in christ jesus you have something good in you bring it out let people be refreshed let people be encouraged. Let people be strengthened. And give them a word. Let them know that somebody cares. Let them know that somebody appreciates them. And then this work, you'll be a helper. And the work between you, the preacher, and the helper, this work will move forward in Jesus' name. It says in verse 7, For we have we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints, what is that? Are refreshed by thee, brother. You can refresh somebody. You can en you can encourage somebody. You can lift up somebody. And those people say, "Praise the Lord." I was down, but that brother came, and you know the word has challenged me, and I want to keep on moving again. That sister came, and you know just just little cup of water, and now I feel refreshed, and I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel, and their discouragement will vanish away in Jesus' name. I'm coming now to point number two. We're looking at four the highlights for the propagation of scriptural truth for the highlights we're coming to a uh, verse 7 in verse 7 it says that's a uh, third john chapter 1 verse 7 it says because for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing 
of the Gentiles. It says, because for his name's sake, it's talking about these people who are preaching the gospel. It's talking about these people that met, the chaos met. It's talking about the people, evangelists and preachers and soul winners and investors and the people who are bringing souls into the kingdom. He said, you can tell. The very first thing we notice about them, they went out for his name's sake. Don't lose that. Don't miss that. For his name's sake. Whatever you are going to do, for his name's sake. Are you praying for somebody? For his name's sake. Are you encouraging somebody? For his name's sake. Are you reaching out and touching lives so that they can repent and come to the Lord? For his name's sake. Are you teaching? Are you teaching Sunday scripture? For his name's sake. Are you preaching the word of God to one person, to a family, or to a community of people? For his name's sake. You see, when we forget that, it's like I'm doing it for myself. It's like I enjoy doing it. And that's uh, why I'm doing That's not the reason you're doing it. That's not the reason you're serving the Lord. That's not the reason you're serving the church or serving the people of God. You're doing it. Tell me why. For his name's sake. And let's see the importance of that. For his name's sake. It, look at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 3. It says, and as born and as patience. For my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. For my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. There, there are things we do that we might feel tired. You know, you've been, you've been here and here and there. And then you get tired. And sometimes you don't even see the fruit of the work you're doing. You don't see the fruit of the labor. The people are being blessed. They are born again, but they don't never come and tell you. The people are being strengthened the Lord. They never come and tell you. And the people, they're saying, praise the Lord. They praise the Lord privately for what God is doing for them through you. But they never tell you. And because you don't know, you might be wondering, am I, you know, spending my life right? Am I doing the right thing? and this and that and the people know that you are doing the right thing but you don't know but when you remember well although I'm almost fainting I'm getting tired I'm laboring but I know it is for his name's sake always remember that it will really help you to do the work that you ought to do for his name's sake we're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 16 Acts chapter 9 reading from verse 16 for I will show him how many how great things he must suffer for what? For my name's sake. Here is uh, Paul the Apostle. He was just coming into the kingdom. And then God was telling Ananias. He said, go and go and tell him. And go and lay hands on him so that his eyes will be opened. Because I've chosen him. He's a chosen instrument in my hand. I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And say this for the sake of the Lord and for his name. And that's why Paul the Apostle went through everything he went through. And it didn't bother him at all because he said i know i'm doing this for the lord i know i'm suffering this for the lord it's not because of you know what i did before you some people will say saul was a great persecutor an injurious person and now although he's born again everything he's suffering now is because of what he did in the past and uh, he himself will realize now how terrible he was because now it's coming back to him it's what he sowed that he's now reaping and when anybody told uh, Paul that he said they don't understand when God forgives he forgets and when God forgives he doesn't punish you again for what he has forgiven but the Lord had told me I'm going to suffer this for his name's sake and because I know it's for his name's sake that's why I am not bothered and when you know that what you're going through and what is happening to you is for his name's sake there'll be joy in your heart because the Lord is going to reward you we're looking at Romans chapter 15, verse 30. Romans chapter 15, verse 30. Now, I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord 
Jesus Christ's sake. You see that? He said, I beseech you, all these commandments I'm giving to you, all this instruction I'm giving to you, and all this requirement I'm making of you, it is for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. You strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. I'm praying for Paul the Apostle, but he doesn't even know that I'm praying for him. I'm praying, I'm trying to intercede for Paul the Apostle. Sometimes I even fast for Paul the Apostle, but he doesn't know. And since he doesn't know, what's the use? You're doing it for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. And though Paul may not know, and though those preachers may not know, Christ knows. And because he knows you're doing it for his own sake, and you're praying for Paul the Apostle, and Paul is becoming stronger and stronger, and Paul is not even aware that that's the person praying for him that is making him strong in the work of the Lord but Christ knows all the reward that Paul is going to receive you receive it as well in Jesus name. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 for his name's sake everything we do, everything we do, we should do it for his name's sake. You might be tired remember for his name's sake you might be weary, remember it's for his name's sake and then it might look as if I'm not going to get vacation, I'm going to rest. People don't understand why you're laboring like this. I'm not going to take time off. You remember for his name's sake, you will not be tired. You will not be weary. And this work will continue to prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. You have come to the kingdom at such a time like this. You have something to do no other person will do. I said you have something to know that person will do. And when discouragement is coming, when it appears, why am I doing this? Does anybody appreciate this? God appreciates. You do it for his name's sake, he will reward you. We're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 19. It says, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more, you'll gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. You see everything that he does, that he did, he did it this way and this way and that way, and he said that I might gain them all. He says to the weak became I as weak, and that I might gain gain the weak. I have made all things unto all men, that I might by all means tell me, save some. He said, I'm doing all this so that so shall be saved. They'll be rescued from eternal hell. They'll be rescued from eternal suffering. They'll be rescued from perdition. He says, that's why I'm doing that, that some might be saved. Look at this, Numbers 23, and this I do. Why? For the gospel's sake. For the gospel's sake. For Christ's sake. For his name's sake. And for the gospel's sake. That I might be partakers thereof with you. We're coming to Third John. Third John. We're looking at that verse 7 again. Third John verse 7. It says, Because that for his name's sake they went forth. For his name's sake, they went forth. The Lord is, has given the commandment and the commission. And he said, go ye to all the world. Look at this in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And then see why they went out and why they went forth and why they did what they did. Mark chapter 16. And I'm reading here from verse 15. In Mark 16, looking at verse 15, the great commission. And the great commandment and the great thing that he gave them to do that they were responding to. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to how many people? Every creature, every creature. And you see, you see what they were going forth. They said, we have been preaching the gospel. Peter, is that not enough? We have not reached every creature yet. 
John, is that not enough? We have not reached every creature yet. And Paul, the apostle, you preach over here, over here, and over there, and you've touched the lives of those Gentiles. Are you not going to stop now? Will you not retire? We have not reached every creature yet. Because the commission of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord is going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Look at verse 20. And they went forth. That's why they went forth. They went to preach. That's why they went forth. They went to declare the gospel, the saving gospel of the Lord, the scriptural gospel of the Lord that will bring them out of their sin and bring them into the kingdom. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word or signs following. And everybody said, yeah. Amen. They went forth went forth and the lord is calling upon us to go forth but let me explain something to you when they went forth many of them did not go far enough they didn't go far enough they were bound by tradition they were bound by culture they were limited by the old covenant they were limited by the definition of their work at the time of Christ during the gospel period. What does that mean? Jesus said, when he was here on earth, when he sent them out two by two, he said, go, and everywhere you go, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, freely you have received, freely give. But then he said, do not go to the Samaritans and do not go to the Gentiles, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Some of them retained that in their hearts. But now Jesus died, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of Israel, of the world, of the world. And because he has not made the sacrifice, which is for the salvation of the whole world, he now said, he extended, he expanded what he had told them before. Instead of just go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he said, now go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to, tell me, every creature. Look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 11 acts of the apostles chapter 11 and i'm reading here from verse 19 acts of the apostles we're looking at chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 19 they went forth but what did they do and did they did go as far as the lord wanted them to go acts of the apostles chapter 11 verse 19 it says now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenice and Cyprus and Antioch tell me the rest read it very well preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Is that what the Lord told them? No. But you know, they were going back to what he told them in Matthew chapter 10. When he said, don't go to Samaritans and don't go to Gentiles. Just pray to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And some of these people that John, the beloved, was writing about, that had gone to the place where Gaius was. These people were committed to just the Jewish people. And were preaching the gospel only to the Jewish people. And because of that, they will not uh, get anything from the Gentiles. That's why it says, for his name's sake, yes, for his name's sake, they went forth, yes, they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. But how about you today? You see, there are people that will read that and they will say, uh uh, they go on missionary field. For example, you go to a particular country, there's no deeper life there, and uh, you need accommodation. Somebody offers accommodation to you, and it says, Come and stay here because I see that you are a man of God and you are preaching the word. I'll say, Uh, uh you are not deeper life, you are not born again, and there's no deeper life person there. Where are you going to stay? And then somebody is giving that, and uh, you know, 
Bible says, taking nothing of the Gentiles. And then not only that, uh, you know, you go to, even here in our country, uh, you go to a particular state, for example, and as you get to that state, you want to have a crusade. And as you want to have the crusade, the leadership or the authority of that place may realize that he wants to have a crusade. I've heard about that man, and uh, okay, uh, tell him, we we'll give him the stadium so that he can use it. So he's not going to pay for it free of charge. And then all the light in the stadium and all the PA system, everything, we give him to use because we appreciate what he's doing. And then they come to tell you that they've given the stadium and the light and everything. And uh, you ask, who gave that? They mention the name of the authority that gave that. You say, is he born again? They say, we don't know. Is he a member of Deeper Life? We don't know. Ah, he's one of those Gentiles taking nothing of the Gentiles. We don't want stadium. We're going to use the backyard of uh, some of our members there. You'll not be able to do the work because you don't understand why those people did not take anything of the Gentiles. Let me read something to you. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. This is the time when uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you know, gave uh, this revelation to Paul the Apostle. Because you see, Paul the Apostle was a teacher of the Gentiles. And Paul the Apostle was a preacher of the gospel to Gentile. But Peter, Peter had been staying in Jerusalem doing the work of God, going forth to Joppa, going back to the, the, this place and that place. But he never got to the Gentiles. And now when God told him, told Peter, said, arise and kill and eat, he said, never. I've never done anything like that, like that in my life before. That's tradition. That's culture. That's the thing that bound them. That's why they were not able to reach every place they were going to reach. Eventually, the Lord overcame him and conquered him. So, okay, I will go. And eventually, the people came. They came from Cornelius. And the Spirit of God said, three men are looking for you. Go with them. And then he went. I want you to look at uh, verse. Uh, uh, let's look at uh, Acts of the Apostles. This is uh, chapter 10. I'm going to select some verses there because, uh, you know, it's uh, quite uh, a long uh, passage. Let's start from verse 27. Verse 27. And as he talked with him, he went in. And he found many that were gathered together. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company and to come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. If God has shown you that one, you telling them are you telling them you know that i shouldn't be here but i've come because i'm forced to be here look at verse 29 therefore came i unto you without gain sin as soon as i was sent for i asked therefore for what intent have you sent for me peter god already told you that that you, you tell him was whereby he will be saved. But let's come now to verse 33. And this Cornelius immediately, therefore, I said to thee that thou hast done well, that thou art come now. Therefore, we are all here present before God, tell me, to hear all things. Don't think we are Gentiles, we are not going to listen. Give us everything. Tell us everything about salvation, about sanctification, about the Holy Ghost, about power, about everything the Lord has taught you. It says all six that are commanded thee of God. And then in verse 34, and Peter opened his mouth and said, then he was preaching. Look at verse 44. In verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, he wasn't telling them everything. He was measuring his word was still looking at them and uh, talking about salvation talking about repentance these are gentle people you need to you know be slow and tell them but while he was here speaking the holy ghost fell on all them that had the word and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished they were surprised as many as came with peter because that on the gentiles on who tell me out loud on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then they were baptized in water. Look at verse 48. In verse 48, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Read the last part there. 
Then prayed him, pleaded with him to tarry certain days. Look up here. When he was going to Cornelius, gentle, did he take uh, enough food with him so that he would not eat over there? No. I about taking nothing of the Gentiles. Uh -uh. Now, when you go to reach those Gentiles, now you understand God wants them saved. And you are there, and you are to eat, and they prepare food for you. Will you take it, or you, you'll not take it? You will take it. But, let's say you are here, and you want to go and preach in the two blocks over there. You don't need to eat over there. You can come back to your house and eat. Let's say you go on the bus, and you go to preach. You don't need to collect anything from them there. Here is your house. You'll come back to your house. But when you go out to preach, and you're reaching those Gentiles, and they provide accommodation, and they provide uh, maybe motor or whatever, and they provide stadium or whatever, can you take it, or will you take it, or will you not take it? If you are sent to the country of adoption that, uh, you know, you are adopting and then you are sent to go there and we do not have a deeper life members or whatever and somebody saw you at the airport and said, you look like a preacher and you say, by the grace of God, I am. Do you have accommodation? No, I don't have accommodation. I have an extra uh, room where you can stay. Will you stay there and then we'll take care of you and everything. Should you take it or should you not take it? about taking nothing of the Gentiles. You will, because now the Lord has sent you to them in a far away place, and those needs are there, and you get them. And that's what the Lord is telling us. Look at the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, and we're reading from verse 1. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, verse 1. Are you there? Have you opened it? Acts 28 verse 1, and when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. It was a strange place. They have never gone to that place, and when they arrived there, they saw that the place was called Melita or Malta. And it says that the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire. Are these uh, people Christians or Gentiles? Tell me out loud. Gentiles. It says they killed the fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and um, laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his son. And when the barbarous people, the barbarians, saw the venomous beast hang on his son, they they said among themselves, no doubt, this man is a murderer. They didn't understand. They didn't know what, what an apostle was. They didn't know who a preacher was. They didn't know who are the people called of God. They said, look at what happened to him. This one is a murderer. Who thought, whom thought it, though he escaped the sea? He says, now yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the bees into the fire and felt no harm. You'll feel no harm. How be it they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm came to him, they changed their minds and they said, they said, it was a God. Are these believers? Who are they? Gentiles, they didn't know the word of God or the truth of the word. In the same quarter were, pos were uh, possessions of um, the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us. You see that? Gentile, who received us and lodged us how many days? Three days courteously. Why didn't tell Paul the apostle? Uh -uh, taking nothing of the Gentiles because those are the people there. 
There's no other person there. There are no believers there. And he didn't have anything there. And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And since his people were not there, since the believers were not there, and those people, the Lord moved there, has to take care of him and take care of them. He received that. And then he says, and it came to pass that the uh, father of Publius lay sick of a, of a fever and uh, of a bloody flux. And then he goes on to say, to whom Paul entered in and preached and laid his hands on him. What happened? And healed him. So when this was done, it says, others also which had diseases in the island came and they were like you are going to be healed tonight in verse in verse 10 who also look at this now who also honored us with tell me many honors and when we departed they laid they laid it on they laid it us with such things as were necessary so you understand because he was reaching to the gentiles and that was a special ministry of reaching to the gentiles everything that she ought to have he received he wasn't saying uh uh will not take anything of the gentiles but these other people that uh, john was talking about they had a limited ministry and they had limited understanding and they were reaching to the jews only and as they were reaching to the jews they will take anything from the jews but they will not take anything from gentiles but please understand a an unconverted jew an unconverted gentile any difference between them no difference. When the Lord sent them out at the beginning, he told them, any house you enter into, those houses, they were not born again. They were the people that went to bring the word of repentance and salvation to them. They were not born again. But Jesus said, all those uh, Jewish people, as you enter their house, if there's a person of peace there that ac accepts you and welcomes you, whatever they lay before you eat, they were still unbelievers. It's only that they were not Gentiles, they were Jews. The same thing now, as we're reaching out and we're going to that city and going to that place and going to that other place, anything that is said before us, are we going to eat or are we going to fast for you are there for one month in the country you are sent to? Are you going to fast for one month? What do you do? You eat what they give you and then you are not misquoting the scriptures, taking nothing of the Gentiles. Are you all right? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Because there are some people who are rigid. There are people who say, well, I don't know about that. The only thing I know is taking nothing of the Gentiles. You reject the truth. You know, you'll suffer for that. But if you accept the truth, the Lord will take care of your life. Yeah. Give me a good amen. Yeah. I'm going to point number three now. It says the fellow helpers with proclaimers of sanctifying truth we're coming to uh, third john third john chapter one and we're coming to verse eight we we therefore ought to receive such that we might be tell me fellow helpers to the truth that we might be fellow helpers to the truth very important already i explained part of that to you at the beginning but let's look at the word of god fellow helpers fellow helpers we're looking at romans chapter 16 in romans chapter 16 we're looking at verse 3 greet priscilla and aquila my help us in christ jesus you see paul the apostle was an apostle but he had helpers in christ jesus you see preachers there are helpers in christ jesus as i said you may not be an apostle you may not be a prophet you may not be a pastor you may not be an overseer what can you do to be of help to those who are preaching the gospel and he says who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom now not only i give thanks but also all the 
churches of the Gentiles. Not only I'm giving thanks for them, but the churches of the Gentiles, because they see how the family, how they are helping me to propagate the gospel. Look at verse 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. That's part of the hell. You give your house for fellowship. You give your house for church service. You give your house for a Bible study. If it's a good enough for a Bible study, it says, salute my well-beloved Epaneos, who is um, the first fruits of Achaia uh, unto Christ. Look at verse 6. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Does that help us? Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. We're looking at First Corinthians chapter 16. First Corinthians chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15 here. I beseech you, brethren, ye you know the house of uh, Stephanas, that it is uh, the first fruit of Achaia, and that thou and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints they just gave themselves abandoned themselves to the ministry of the saints that's the work of the lord second corinthians chapter 8 second corinthians chapter 8 verse 23 in verse 23 second corinthians chapter 8 it says whether any do inquire ask of titus he is my partner and fellow helper my partner and fellow helper you see that we can help in the preaching of the gospel we'll not just fold our hands and say i'm not this i'm not that don't tell us what you are not tell us who you are tell us what you are and tell us what you can do you can do something i said you will do something there are times when the preachers are limited in a particular way and then you come along and then you help i'm looking at jeremiah chapter 36 jeremiah chapter 36 and you'll see what uh, the lord is telling us about how you give yourself how you surrender yourself and how you addict yourself abandon yourself to the work of the ministry while you are assisting while you are supporting while you are helping while you are lifting up the hands of the people who are doing the work of the lord we're looking at jeremiah chapter 36 i'm reading from verse 5 and jeremiah a commanded baruch saying i am shut up i cannot go unto the house of the lord therefore because i'm shut up therefore because i'm confined therefore because i'm suffering persecution therefore because i'm held back therefore go thou and reach the role which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the lord in the ears of the people in the lord's house upon the fasting day and also thou shalt read them in the ears of all judah that come out of their cities it may be that they will present their supplication before the lord and will return everyone from this from his evil way for great is the anger and the fury that the lord has that the lord has pronounced against this people you know what had happened there uh, jeremiah was the prophet he was the one that had the ministry but now he was confined now he was in prison and he called Baruch. And Baruch was a fellow helper. What did he do? He got the word from his mouth and he wrote that down. He said, now you're reaching it down. Of what use it is it on paper? If the people are not hearing, you are free. I'm confined here. You are at liberty. I'm in prison here. So take that word that you have written and go and read it in the ears of the people. You know, you can be a help like that. You know, sometimes we come to the service, combined service, Monday Bible study, or any other kind of revival service and you enjoy everything you know there are some old women 
that they are so old, they are aged, and they cannot move about freely. And then you get that word, it's reaching down. You get that word, it's recorded. And then you take that recording, and you go to them, and you take your songbook with you. And then you say, you know, today, mom, we had this uh, service. You know, today, dad, we had uh, this service, and this is a song we sang. And then you sing with them there. Although they are bedridden, although they are aged, you are a helper, a fellow helper in the gospel. And then everything, you if you don't have uh, you know, the recorded message, you have the message, you preach it to them. You say point one, point two, point three, and everything. And then the way we prayed, and you prayed with them, so that they are part of the service even though they couldn't physically go to the place to over there. Or sometimes uh, you, have, you have come back from the service and there are people that are living in your house and all those people didn't go with you to the service then you collect them together. May, they may be young people, children, children how are you today? It's Sunday. We're going to do something today. We're going to have church here and then call the other people church, church. We don't have to say it is house fellowship. We don't have to say that you know I am, I, I'm this or I'm not that and then you gather them together and what you learned might be the certain scripture of that day you bring everything together and you preach it to them we kneel down and we pray and they have church there that's jeremiah he had given the word and then you now come and then you read the word to them preach the word to them there's a lot we can do today the preaching of the gospel and the lord will reward every one of us in jesus name we can be fellow helpers in the proclaiming of the gospel in the preaching of the word of god in spreading the gospel in giving out the message of christ transforming lives and sanctifying believers what we can write it down not only that we can transcribe be from after it is written out we can print it out and when we print it out we're going to distribute to many many people or we can and record it down. We can get everything. The video is even available. And the thing is available. You can purchase that thing. And as you purchase it, you can get people together. You listen. And then you help other people too to listen. And the word of God reaching out to them. And the word of God is impacting their lives. And the word of God is changing their lives. And the word of God is transforming them and preparing them for heaven. That's how we can be fellow helpers. You can put it on the Facebook. You can use a social media youtube is there you can put it on youtube or you can you can do whatever with it and multiply the effect of that word that we're hearing look at Je jeremiah chapter 36 in jeremiah chapter 36 i'm reading here from verse 8. it says uh, 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 chapter 36 reading from verse 8 in chapter 36 of Jeremiah, reading from verse 8, look at what it is. And Baruch, the son of uh, Nariah, did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading in the book the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. Jeremiah was not there, but was faithful. Like you have come to the Bible study, everything you are hearing, that you are going to spread the word, you'll be fellow helpers, you'll be faithful in Jesus' name. Verse 9, and it came to pass in the fifth year of uh, Jehoiakim, the son of uh, Josiah, the king of Judah, in the nice uh, month, it says that they, uh, they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah unto Jerusalem. Now you see people came from the cities too. It's not just confined to the people in Jerusalem. Then, tell me, tell me out loud. Then read Baruch in the book of the in the book, the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of a uh, Gamariah. And then it says it goes to the son of uh, the scribe in the higher court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house in the ears of all the people. In the ears of all the people. That's the challenge the Lord has given us. That if a uh, Baruch could do that after you had written the word down from uh, Jeremiah I too I can do that and you too you can do that and we're going to do that in Jesus name look at verse 11 in verse 11 when Micaiah the son of Gam Gamariah and the son of Shephiah had 
heard out of the book all the words of the Lord. Then he went down. It's another man now. He went down into the king's house, into the scribes chamber, and lo, all the princes sat there. Even then they mentioned their names up to the end of that verse. Look at verse 13. And then Micaiah declared unto them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read the book in the ears of the people. In this case now, he is not reading, but he said it, and it was in his heart. And then he declared to them all the words that he had heard. You see, we are wasting a lot of time when we say, I'm not this, I'm not Jeremiah, I'm not a prophet, I'm not an apostle, I'm not this and that. You have heard it already. You have studied it already. You have got it already. Now you are going to take that word, and you are going to give to other people in that way you'll be a fellow helper in the word of the Lord and in the ministry look at verse 14 therefore all the princes sent uh, uh, Jehudai the son of Nessa Nathaniah, the son of then it goes on again. It says, Take in thy hand the roll wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people, and come and they come. So Baruch, the son of Neriah, took the roll in his hand and came unto them. And they said unto him, Sit down now and reach it in our ears. So Baruch read it in their ears and uh, jeremiah was still in the prison jeremiah was not able to come out and preach to them he was confined he was in prison he was limited but the word of god was not limited and the word of god is in your mouth the word of god is in your heart and that word of god you'll take it to other people every house they were here Every community, they will hear. All those men, they will hear. All those women, they will hear. The people that need to hear the word of God, but they don't have a chance to come. They don't have a chance to come over here to hear the word. It's your mouth, it's your heart. You're going to declare it to them in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16 here. And it came to pass when they had heard all the words, they were afraid both the one and the other and said unto Baruch we will surely tell the king all this was. You see how the word is spreading? We'll even tell the authorities. Jeremiah could not reach the king, could not reach the authorities but maybe you are working in the office with them maybe you are a neighbor to them maybe you are a relative of somebody who is very high there. You can get to them anytime and you have the word already. You'll give the word to them in Jesus name. It says in verse 18, then Baruch answered them because they asked him, let's come to verse 17 and, and they asked Baruch saying tell us now how thou uh, how uh, didst thou write all these words at his uh, mouth then Baruch answered them he pronounced all these words unto me and then it says with his mouth and I wrote them with ink in the book and then those princes, they say something to him. But let me show you something. As we look at, uh, you know, the reward of that, verse 26. In verse 26, it says, But the king commanded Je, uh, Jera, Jeremiel, and the son of, uh, well, you know that name. And all the other names, he commanded them that they should produce, they should bring that bureau, to take bureau, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet, tell me the last thing there. But the Lord, but the Lord hid. Is it just Jeremiah that the Lord hid? Who did he also hide? There, the Lord hid them. The same reward that came to Jeremiah came to Baruch. The same protection that came on Jeremiah also came to Baruch. 
And so you understand, when we do this as the Lord is telling us, that we become fellow helpers of the truth, and we preach the word, and we publish the word, and we do not allow the word to die at our doorstep, or to die with us, and we're giving it out, and we're giving it in all the areas we can give it by printing, by recording, by distribution, everywhere, the blessing of the Lord will be upon you. And the blessing of the Lord will come to the people you are preaching to, they'll be saved. They'll be strengthened. They'll be sustained in the faith. They'll be sanctified. And when the trumpet shall sound, you and them, you'll make it together in Jesus' name. Third John, I'm reading from chapter 1 of Third John from verse 5. Beloved, that doest faithfully, whatsoever that doest to the brethren and to the strangers. The Lord is saying that we should be like girls and do faithfully what he has called us to do the preaching of the gospel the publication of the gospel the propagation of the gospel and it says which are born witness of thy charity let your charity and let your love and let your good works be so clear so plain well known to people that they bear witness that you're actually taking this word of salvation and this word of eternal life you're taking it everywhere and do it before the church whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort thou shalt do well you will do well yeah. what are you there i said you will do well yeah. this watch will come through you to all the people in jesus name yeah. because now for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the gentiles now you understand that we therefore we therefore every one of us we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers of the truth. I'll be a fellow helper. I said I'll be a fellow helper. The Lord will confirm it in our lives in Jesus' name. You'll be faithful. You'll be fruitful. And you'll bring souls more into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has opened our eyes. He has told us how we can do it and what we can do. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. You will not fail. You will not fail. You'll be faithful. This word will come out of you and come from you and go to our neighbors.